Did you get the sense at, the, at Somerset, for example, that any of your colleagues, any of the nurses, any of the doctors knew what was going on? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things the good nurse got factually right and wrong. I'm gonna need more than that. What do you want me to tell you? For this list, we're looking at what's real and what's fiction in Netflix's crime drama. What did you think of The Good Nurse? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Charles Cullen's Ex-Wife and Children Right. In the Netflix film, Charles Cullen confides in his new friend Amy Loughran, now Ridgeway, that he has two daughters with his ex-wife. He doesn't see them too often due to the messy divorce and hostility of his ex. According to him, she accused him of hurting their dog. Their uh, mom moved like six hours away, so that's kind of why I'm here. In real life, Cullen did marry Adrienne Baum in 1987, and the couple had two daughters. But after issues in their marriage, she filed for divorce in 1993. Adrienne also filed a restraining order against him, citing his erratic behavior and violence towards their dogs. I'm sorry. No, you kidding? It's my own fault. I picked a crazy. Like in the film, Cullen dismissed her claims as exaggerated. Around this time, he stalked a female co-worker and was charged with trespassing, as mentioned in the film. It says he slashed a co-worker's tires after they broke up. Number 9. Names of Hospitals and Patients Wrong In the film, Charles and Amy work together at Parkfield Memorial Hospital in New Jersey. He also mentions his previous experience at several other places. I've been all over, really. Florence, Vance, Shawlins, Shawlins. A girl I trained with works at Shawlins. These aren't the real hospitals where he worked, which were likely changed for legal reasons. He met Amy at Somerset Medical Center, which the film states is his ninth hospital of employment. No, if something would have happened, he wouldn't have been able to get another job. The hospital would have done something. You would think so. so. The names of the patients in the film are also fictional, but for a different reason. Director Tobias Lindholm and writer Christy Wilson Cairns decided not to recreate the deaths of real patients out of respect for their families. Instead, the film employs characters with non-terminal conditions like the elderly Anna Martinez and young mother Kelly Anderson to illustrate just how randomly Charles Cullen shows his victims. Names. I can't remember all the names. Number 8. Charles Cullen's mother died in a hospital. Right. Shortly after meeting, Charles tells Amy about the tragic death of his mother when he was younger and how the hospital lost her body afterwards. No. Yeah, insane, just for a couple hours. But, you know, and then when they did find her, it was this. She was like, you know, half uncovered, naked, total mess. In real life, his mother Florence Cullen died after a car accident on December 6, 1977. Charles was a high school senior at the time. Though he was told she was in an accident, he didn't know she was dead until he arrived at the hospital to see her. So he felt as if he had been betrayed by the hospital system. The hospital didn't lose her body as it's said in the film, but they did cremate her rather than returning her body to the family. In both cases, the tragic situation was poorly handled. He felt out of control, helpless, and disempowered. He wanted to re-exert power. Number 7. Hospitals Stalled Investigations Right. The negligence of Parkfield Memorial Hospital may seem exaggerated in the film, but sadly, it's not. Parkfield's risk manager, Linda Guerin, repeatedly makes excuses for their actions and inactions. Nurse Guerin, it, it's looking a lot like you're withholding some evidence here. I'm not sure I follow. Six pages. Where's the rest of it? I'm sorry. I, um, I have another meeting on the can oh, shift. I, I'm not done. I'm going to reschedule with your office. Along with others, her unwillingness to cooperate with detectives Danny Baldwin and Tim Braun, both based on real detectives, significantly impedes the investigation. Like the fictional Parkfield, Somerset Medical Center held important information for months before reporting it to police, giving Cullen time to kill five more patients during that time. That we know of. Uh, but those, but those, those five deaths, will I'll, I'll remember them the rest of my life. <laughs> Sorry. They didn't have to happen. I, I, they, they should have been preventable, yes.
They also lied about the data storage on the drug dispensing system. And when the real detectives Baldwin and Braun inquired about Cullen's work history at other hospitals, and even his harassment charges involving a former co-worker, they were just as blatantly uncooperative. They were very helpful by answering court-issued subpoenas. Uh, that was the extent of their cooperation. Number six, Amy Loughran was the only nurse to take action against Cullen. Wrong. The film implies that until law enforcement enlisted the help of Amy Loughran, no other co-workers tried to get someone to look into Charles Cullen. While Loughran is the most involved in the investigation that ultimately stopped him, other nurses called attention to his suspicious behavior at previous hospitals. But we used to get codes every night, sometimes two or three, and then after he left, we got, like, only one a month. When he started working at Sacred Heart Hospital in June 2001, one of the nurses expressed her concerns regarding rumors of the internal investigation at Easton Hospital a few years prior. It's because I was uh, targeted by some co-workers. I don't know, maybe they're at it again. Or... Right before he went to Somerset, multiple co-workers at St. Luke's Hospital spoke up after the suspicious deaths of five patients and evidence that he had taken and disposed of medications. Despite proof he had stolen medications, Cullen resigned without consequences. They all say the same thing. They cover up their own liabilities. It happens again and again and again. Number five, Amy needed a heart transplant. Wrong. After Charles sees Amy struggling to breathe at work, she confides in him that she has a heart condition, something she keeps secret from her employers who wouldn't allow her to work. How much longer do you need to work here before you get your insurance? Four months. He promises to keep it between them and that he'll help her out when she needs him. A doctor informs Amy that her condition is dire. This is now about keeping your heart going long enough. For what? to get you on the transplant list. The real Amy did suffer from cardiomyopathy. However, after having a pacemaker implanted, a heart transplant wasn't needed. Amy had the surgery before the investigation, and she had to convince the detectives that she and her heart could handle the stress. I'm now 17, 18 years outside of my um, my heart surgery, so I'm very, yeah. I'm more healthy. Number four, Amy and Charles were best friends. Right. I know Charlie really well. We work every shift together, and he's a very good nurse. When Amy Loughran and Charles Cullen first meet while working the night shift in Parkfield's intensive care unit, they click right away and become fast friends. The more they confided in each other about their personal lives and spent time together outside of work, the closer they became, which is why it was so hard for her to believe that there could be a darker side to him. The real Amy felt the same way about her friend, that she believed to be kind and considerate. I saw him go from this wonderful, gentle, soft-spoken, great teammate to uh, this very angry, smug, hmm. uh, person that I did not know. She struggled to go through with the plan to manipulate Charles into revealing he'd been murdering patients. But in the end, Amy was able to use their friendship to put away a cold-blooded killer. Were you angry? I was sad for my patients. I was, um, so many things were going through my mind. I was sad. I didn't see it. I felt betrayed by my own intuition. Number three, Charles spent time with Amy's kids. Wrong. As Charles and Amy's friendship grows, the film shows him meeting the single mother's two daughters, Maya and Alex. Okay, take my hands. Repeat after me. I am the mayor of Homedrum Falls. 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 He regularly offers to babysit and even does so unannounced, much to Amy's surprise and concern. In one tense scene, she arrives home to see him in her home alone with the girls and cooking dinner. Alex. Maya, please come here. Why? Because I'm asking you to just come over here. In real life, her daughters were a little older and wouldn't have met Cullen, at least according to true crime author Charles Graber. They were eventually made aware that their mother's co-worker might have been a murderer. Alex, her oldest, encouraged Amy to help the police catch him, even if it meant putting their family at risk. But that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna be okay. Number two. 
Cullen's killing methods. Right. It injects the insulin into the bags, and because it enters the bloodstream slowly, it could take hours or even, you know, a day to kill someone. So he's killing them without ever touching them. Since the film is from Amy's point of view, Charles isn't actually shown committing any of the murders or contaminating IV bags. Instead, we see him performing regular nurse duties without causing any suspicion. They found insulin in a dead guy's saline bag. They found it in a few. Pinpricks and the ones in the store, somebody had dosed them before they went out. After speaking with a friend and fellow nurse, Amy checks the storage room of IV bags and discovers they'd been spiked. She later goes right in after Charles sets a patient up with a bag of fluids and switches it out with a new one. The real Charles Cullen reportedly killed patients by injecting lethal doses of unprescribed medication into their system, mainly digoxin, insulin, or a cocktail of both. Digoxin slows down a patient's heart rate, and insulin lowers their blood sugar, meaning high doses of either or both prove to be fatal. He was holding two murder weapons. 357 is the time of death. Everything's there. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, how he was caught. Right. When investigators realized they didn't have enough solid evidence to arrest Charles Cullen for murder, they knew what they needed was a confession. Amy Loughran agreed to wear a wire and try to get her friend to admit what he'd done. I wouldn't care if you did those things. I mean, I could understand. At the diner, their tense exchange only lasts minutes before Cullen has an outburst and abruptly leaves, refusing to talk about Parkfield. This is really close to how it actually happened, except the exchange was said to have been much longer. That Amy had helped the police. I strongly suspected that she was wired when she was asking me those questions. When he walked out, he was arrested, like in the film. She also visited Cullen while he was in the interrogation room with the detectives, where they spent at least seven hours convincing him to confess. So, who was, who was your first, first victim? And was it a long time ago? Was it recent? And he started to talk. Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.